Right, so we've taken all the panels off the um, Air 240 and the first thing we're going to do is pop out the stock fans because we're not going to be using them. Because this is where the H105 is going. So we'll start as we mean to go on, we're going to strip everything out. before we strip everything back together again. So I suppose we could, be, could use a uh, electric screwdriver but um, alas all of my tools are um, in Southampton which is not where I am unfortunately so and we're also going to pop out the top AF120 what is that that's just falling out? I do not know, but we'll keep hold of that. And they're very good these fans from Corsair, the AFs. They do move a ton of air, but they're grey and orange, so they're coming out. And like everybody who builds PCs, we're going to keep the screws because you never know when you're going to need them. Right, the next part is the um, motherboard. So before we put the motherboard in, we need to attach the um, uh, clamp on the back here, the bracket for the H105. And you can see which way around that goes. And these are adjustable, so they will fit different sockets. So that pulls in. And then uh, for an Intel, See these are the same length front and back. I've already done a H105 installation video, so I'm not going to bore you again with it all. But these then go into the standoffs which poke through the board. Now this is easier. With a, with a different type of motherboard because this massive armour on these does make it a little tricky getting the screws in but all you need to do is just, just do them up finger tight don't get a pair of pliers on or anything like that you can see they screw in now again I am earthed in case anyone is uh, anyone is wondering the reason we earth static electricity now coming from an electronics background I'm very aware of static and the damage it can cause. Um, now obviously any time you rub your feet on a carpet or you you shake someone's hand you create static and we all carry electricity and what static does is you won't notice a big flash you won't notice a big flash but it will damage the circuitry so it damage the bits inside the um, inside the PCB and of course you can't see it which is why it's like a silent deadly killer um, but that's the four standoffs in place so now we're going to put the processor in. So handling the processor very, very gently. Just show you it with my finger over the serial number. Um, in the corners of these, I've shown this before, now in these corners, if it's going to focus, you see these cutouts at the top here. When you look at your motherboard, in the top there are two cutouts. So it just drops in. You have to be a little careful when you're doing this because that is full of little pins. Okay, it's full of little pins, and of course we don't want to damage anything because motherboards are expensive, and the last thing you want to do is fuck it up. And once it's in there, it makes that horrible crunchy sound we all know and love. Easy as that. Easy as that. So that's the motherboard almost ready to go in the actual build. Right, I'm going to set what I always say at this point. Do not forget to put the rear shield in the build. Otherwise, you're going to have to take everything back out. Right, I'm going to, to show you how to fit the light bars onto Corsair Dominator Platinum Memory. So the first thing we need to do is pop it out. 
carefully as you can and in the packet with the light bars Corsair give you this little allen key which you need to undo the four screws on the side. Now these are kind of sockets so there is one bit on the front and the bit on the back will fall out as well so as quickly and carefully as you can without throwing them everywhere must be riveting watching me undo some screws but the instructions of these aren't fantastic um, and the first time I ever did it uh, I was a, at a bit of a loss okay so that's all four screws out when you do that this comes off and you see the actual original light bar stays along the top so we're going to pop that one out as well pop that down here now in, in the box you get two white, two blue now I'm not sure on the colour of this build but I do like blue so I think we're going to have the blue and of course they do actually include a load of new screws just in case you lose them as well which is good of them ok then you take the original light bar you pop pop this one in first hang on I'll get my shit together in a minute so you take the um, one with the two holes in and the the actual light bar with the lump on goes in first that way around and then the original light bar goes in on top and that sits it and that holds the top one in and then, making sure everything's the right way around. You pop it back. Together like so. And if you keep, if you keep the weight on it, like that, it'll stop it falling back out. And then it's just a case of Popping the screws back in, making sure you use the correct ones, obviously. And like we always say, don't do one end up tight, just touch it up so it keeps it where it should be. And that's it, and then you just follow all the way on. I'm going to do opposite corners because you know engineering <laughs> and all that shit but it does make sense to do it that way around because you know once the two corner holes are in the other two have got to line up let me just show you what we're doing I am earthed by the way just in case anyone's wondering and there we go we're throwing bits on the floor this must be absolutely awesome. I mean, guys who watch my channel, I know uh, recently I've been doing lots of things where I've had to unscrew panels and take top panels off cases and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm thinking of changing the name of the channel to uh, Ren Undoes Things and then Does Things Back Up Again uh, because that really is all I seem to be doing at the moment. But you guys get the general idea anyway. And the last one. The only, the only thing I will say is make sure when you do this you put the the strip on the same way around as the other one so the dominator is facing the same way. So when, when we look at it that way around the dominator both sides is facing the same way around. It just looks neater. And there we go. It's, they're, they're really really easy to fit. You don't have to over tighten them. And these aluminium heat spreaders are absolutely brilliant and with the, with the little blue leads in the top they look fantastic. So we've got the got the motherboard in place now um, and we've got the RAM in. I just wanted to see how it all fits and how it all looks. Now with the the Air 240 the 8 pin for the motherboard comes through this hole here so I'm going to have to start to wire some of this up I think before we go too far um, but we've got the little AUX fan in that you get with the Griffin and the same with the Sabre too. First I say the process is already in there as well. 
And the reason we're going to start to get some of these cables in is because the radiator in the H100 is going to be about this deep, so I'm going to need to start to get stuff fed through. But so far, it's a really, really easy case to build in. Really simple. We had a little bit of problem with the motherboard screws, but that's because of the armour and the fact it makes it makes it this much deeper. But so far, so good. So when you fit in the power supply in the Air 240, it is just a case of taking the supply, getting the cables out of the way that we've already put in, and it sits down on the rubber feet. Now when you push it up to the back of the case, you have one, two, three screw holes. And of course they're very kindly in the pack supply the screws. So it's just a case of screwing it in. Obviously you want it so the fan is pointing outwards. Just touch them up. And the reason I put in everything, like the power supply and everything in first, is because, like I say, the the cable routing on the rear, on the front of this, is going to be a little awkward because of the thickness of the radiator and the fans we're going to have in. So the whole idea was to get all the cables I need in first. And then we can worry about the um. We, then we sorry. Then we don't have to worry about getting all the cables in afterwards. Nice and easy to fit this power supply. Now some cases are an absolute pain in the ass, but that was simple. And the fact it's sat on the rubber on the rubber feet as well means we're not going to get any vibration from it. And the HX series, as we know, is semi-passive, so the fan only spins up when the radiator gets warm. Radiator? When the um, when the PSU gets warm. So, there we go. Right, is that fitted, and there is the fan in there. Big old fan on the side of it. Now we start connecting up the fun stuff. Hey guys, um, we've got, as you can see, we've got a few components in. Now, I tested the length for the graphics card with the H105 in push-pull and you can see there's about 6mm clearance there. So it's very, very tight. So I installed this first and then I couldn't get the graphics card in because of this special clip that Corsair have put on it. It makes it very, very awkward because you have to kind of poke the card in. So I had to take this back out, install the graphics card and then pop that back in again. Uh, well, as you can see, I haven't popped it back in yet. But there's a word of warning. If you're going to run a H105 in push-pull with a standard length graphics card, this is a standard reference 980, you're going to have to be very, very careful. Otherwise, things aren't going to fit. The only other thing is a bit of a concern is the pipes are so feckin' long on this. But um, I'm sure we can tidy it up. I've already test-booted it to make sure it works and everything, so it does. Um, which is always a relief. Because I worry about things like front panel headers because, you know, easy to make mistakes. So there we go. I just wanted to show you it with it in just to make sure it's uh, so you can, uh, you can see how tight this is here. I can't even get my finger in there between them. But um, the, the 980 is the, the blower type and it sucks air. And the, the bottom of this is mesh. Um, oops. The bottom of the case is mesh so it can suck cool air up through the bottom. So there we go. Stick with me, I will get um, part two or part three or part five, depending what part this is, by the time I finally finish editing it all. Um, and then we'll get all the software installed, we'll get the wiring up done because I haven't touched the back yet. Um, and then we'll, we'll show you it running. <laughs>